Dear DFB, so today we are going to Epcot to see my middle sister Anna perform in her last ever candlelight processional. But if you don't know, I have become absolutely obsessed with Disney food in particular. I find it so innovative and so exciting. And since we're going to be there while Epcot's International Festival of the Holidays is going on, I figure why not take this opportunity for us to maybe try a few things. I know we're going to be doing like the cookie stroll and just some like exciting little things. I don't know. I'm really excited. But I wouldn't like to just dedicate this one to DFB. The Disney food, uh, food blog is amazing. I just can't say your name right. <laughs> um, I'd also like to thank the Tim Tracker, the Walt Disney World couple, and Diz Unplugged. You guys have fed my food obsession. It's great. I'm here with Josephine in the back, so you'll see some reactions, and she's going to help me get some nice cinematic park footage. And of course, Bobby here in the front, because Bobby is the bomb.com and the reason most of these things ever seem to happen. So <laughs> we've got our little Epcot itinerary right here, and we are going to have a really exciting day. Uh, we're going to try a couple different items, and then we're going to end our night by meeting up with Anna after her show and going to Tokyo Dining for dinner. So I'm really excited to have this nice Epcot experience. So let's hope for a really great day. And of course, thank you to my friend Sarah Reese and her dad for getting us into Disney. You guys are amazing. See you soon when we're at the park. Yay! So our first stop is the refreshment port where we tried the turkey poutine. To us, we rated it an 8 out of 10. It was really, really good. So we have a couple things on our best of the fest list and that means they made a 9 out of 10 or higher. I'll tell you when those things come up. And then we have a couple things on our worst of the fest list, meaning they made a 5 out of 10 or lower. There's not too many of those because everything was really good. You're going to see our first reaction to the turkey poutine here in just a second. But meanwhile, I hope you enjoy some footage of the food and the different kitchens we got the food from. Tell me what you think of this style of video in the comments below. We tried 25 items here at the fest. All right, so the first thing we're trying is the turkey poutine. Show. Let's dig in. It looks so good and smells so good. Carrying it over here was like torture. This is weird. I've never eaten while holding a camera. Oh my goodness. Bobby. Bad for you. What is it? Turkey poutine. So it is fries covered in turkey, cranberry relish, and gravy. That's so good. That is like wow. get Bobby's first reaction. Can I give the bird a little fry? Sure. Or are you not supposed to feed Very good. Verdict? Does it say you're not supposed to feed Alright, thumbs up from us. Mm -hmm. Very good. <laughs> so next we stopped at the Yukon Holiday Kitchen to try the Canadian Wild Rice and Ham Soup and the Peppermint Pinwheel Cookie. So the wild rice and ham soup made our best of the fest list with a 9 out of 10. The pretzel roll and the soup complemented each other beautifully and it tasted so, so good. But the peppermint pinwheel cookie made our worst of the fest list with a 5 out of 10. It was so ridiculously dry and it just was not very good. We just, we really didn't like it. But, um, well I say we didn't like it. We just didn't love it. It just didn't taste very good. It was probably our least favorite cookie out of the whole stroll. So our next stop was La Artisan de Glace. I know I butchered that pronunciation. To try their special holiday gingerbread ice cream with gingerbread pieces. We rated it a 6 out of 10. And I think we just discovered that gingerbread is not our favorite flavor in general. The giant chunks of gingerbread were so good. They were nice and soft and the ice cream went super well with it. But it just wasn't a standout for us. I would have much rather had like a fruity flavor or something. 
But if you like gingerbread, then this is definitely for you. Our next stop was the Laheim Holiday Kitchen, where we tried the smoked salmon potato latka. This we gave an 8 out of 10. It tasted brilliant. The potato latka was so crispy, and the smoked salmon and the sour cream tasted beautiful together. We also tried the mini jelly-filled donuts, which we gave a 5 out of 10, which I guess means they made our worst of the fest list only because they tasted like something you could get from Dunkin' Donuts or a Publix. They weren't anything special and not worth the blink of an eye. We also tried the black and white cookie, which we gave a 6 out of 10 because we did like it better than the peppermint pinwheel cookie. It was a little more moist, but the icing was just so heavy. Half of it, I think, was lemon flavored and the other half was a chocolate flavor. And it tasted fine, but it was just really heavy. I also can't believe what this was the only vegan option that they provided at Festival of the Holidays. That honestly surprises me and I feel so bad for vegans that this is their only option because it's really not anything special at all. So next we went to Morocco's Sapphire Holiday Kitchen, where we tried the chicken drum, which we rated a 6 out of 10. It just wasn't anything special. The chicken itself was cooked very good, but I expected a little more from that cinnamon Granny Smith apple on the side. It just didn't taste very good. It was a little tart and I didn't taste much of the cinnamon. I guess I was expecting something a little bit sweeter. We also tried the warm beignets, which is the next thing on our best of the fest list. These were so good. We rated them a 10 out of 10 because, wow, just almost nothing like them. They were so warm and nice and creamy on the inside. They just tasted beautiful. They were like perfect little cream puffs and we just enjoyed them so much. I almost wish there had been more than two because wow, they were just so brilliant. Next, we went to Japan's Shiwasu Holiday Kitchen, where we tried the Shirasi Shushi Tree. Forgive me for messing that up. And we gave it a 7 out of 10. This was nice and spicy. And of course, being the white girl I am, my favorite part was the sticky rice. <laughs> it was delicious. We also tried the matcha creme brulee, which is another thing on our best of the fest list. I gave it a 10 out of 10 because I am a creme brulee connoisseur, and this is personally one of the best creme brulees I've ever had. Even the red bean paste was delicious with it. We also tried the milk boba that they had. It was a strawberry flavor, but personally, it wasn't anything special. We gave it a 7 out of 10. It probably would have been better with some tapioca pearls instead of the popping strawberry pearls at the bottom, but still, it was pretty good and refreshing. Next, we went to the American Adventure Pavilion to the Funnel Cake Stand. We tried the Pumpkin Spice Funnel Cake and gave it an 8 out of 10. Now, personally, I probably would have given it a 9 out of 10 because the pumpkin spice flavor was so strong and really good and it came out piping hot. I found it to be really delicious. But Josephine wanted to give it a 7 out of 10, so we met in the middle and gave it an 8 out of 10. It really just depends on how much of a basic white girl you are, whether you're going to like this or not. Because that pumpkin spice flavor is so strong and so poignant, it's really, really, really good. But if you're not a basic white girl, it probably isn't the perfect thing for you. So... It all depends on what you like and what you don't. Next, we hopped over to the American Holiday Table to try yet another cookie that was a 6 out of 10. This was the gingerbread cookie, and the only thing that made it any better than the peppermint pinwheel cookie was the nice crunch of the icing decorations on top of it. Other than that, it was still pretty dry and nothing special. 
And again, I think on this trip, we discovered that gingerbread just really wasn't the preference of any of us in our little party. Um, other than that, it was just your typical cookie, nothing too special about it, but it was cute and it was a nice little addition to the cookie stroll. So if you like gingerbread, you'd probably really enjoy this cookie. Next, we headed to the Fife and Drum Tavern to try the holiday apple pie sundae. And this is the next thing on our best of the fest list with a perfect 10 out of 10. This was probably our very favorite dish that we tried. It was absolutely incredible. Something about this holiday apple pie sundae just blew our minds. It was so delicious and unanimously we agreed that it was a 10 out of 10 and the best thing that we tried all night. It was so delicious. I don't know what else I can say about it. You have to try this thing if you can. It was just so good. So, so good. So next we went to Italy's Tuscany Holiday Kitchen. And I'm gonna preface this by saying I wish I had tried something else from this kitchen, maybe something savory, just because it smelled so good outside of this kitchen. But we tried the cinnamon apple fritters and this made our best of the fest list with a 9 out of 10. They were very, very delicious, nice and had that lovely fried taste to them, kind of like what you want a funnel cake to taste like. Of course, not the pumpkin spice funnel cake, but you know, just your typical uh, funnel cake taste. They were delicious with that nice vanilla sauce and the confectioner's sugar. Though they did have that heavy taste to them as well. They were very heavy and I could actually only eat about half of mine, but I thought it was wonderful. It tasted so, so good. And Josephine really enjoyed them as well. You'll see a little clip of us here in just a second. So I hope you enjoy because we did. All right, so we are here eating our warm cinnamon apple fritters from the Tuscany Holiday Kitchen. We lost Bobby, he heard the candlelight music and was like, I'm not leaving America. Which of course, <laughs> um, as you can tell, I haven't been doing like eating reactions to everything. I'll probably do like a voiceover or something to tell you guys about what we think. But yeah, I figured I'd do a little halfway point update. So we're halfway through our little food tour of Disney and it's been really fun. I mean, we've, we'll probably make a little best of the fest list and talk about our favorites, maybe talk about some things that disappointed us. But so far, these are really, really good. <laughs> They're inflatable. They're so freaking hot, though. Like, it's really warm, but it's worth it. These holiday kitchens are so nice. So yeah, we'll see you later. So next, we went to the Bavaria Holiday Kitchen in Germany. We tried the Linzer cookie and gave it a 7 out of 10. Again, the cookie itself was kind of dry. The only thing that made it really, really good was that raspberry jam in the middle there. So that made it nice and bearable, made it a little more moist. Other than that, the cookie itself was kind of dry. But next, we tried the cheese fondue in a bread bowl with the little vegetables on the side. And oh my goodness, this was another best of the fest for us. A perfect 10 out of 10. Something about the cheese was so strong yet so delicious. And all the vegetables went wonderfully with it. We probably liked the carrot with the best, but Josephine also loved the potato with it and I did as well. The zucchini with it was nice and good as well, but just the bread with the cheese was probably the best. It was so delicious, like we enjoyed it so much and just loved every bite of it. We were so full at this point, but wow, we just couldn't stop eating it. It was so delicious. So yeah, just another fantastic holiday kitchen for sure.
Next, we made our way to the refreshment outpost to try the Coca-Cola Cinnamon Float. For those of you who don't know, Coca-Cola has a special Cinnamon Coke flavor out right now. They sell it at grocery stores, so this is simply just that in a little ice cream float. However, we gave this a 6 out of 10 because it was just mediocre. It wasn't that impressive. To be honest, the ice cream took out most of the cinnamon flavor of the Coca-Cola. So it honestly just tasted like a normal Coke float. Nothing too special about it. Of course, it was refreshing because we really needed a drink at this time. But other than that, there really wasn't anything that eye-catching about it. Nothing to really, you know, bat an eye at. It just wasn't that impressive. It was just kind of okay. Nothing too special about it. So that's our two cents on that. Next, we went to the Shanghai Holiday Kitchen in China. And we tried the Mongolian beef bao bun with the fortune cookie. Now, this makes our worst of the fest list because it got a 3 out of 10. That Mongolian beef bao bun was horrible. And you'll see our reaction to it in just a moment. But the beef was so tough and the bao bun itself was not very good. And the fortune cookie, of course, was just like your typical Panda Express fortune cookie. But, oh my goodness, this dish was so disappointing. It was so terrible. I just, I can't express how horrible it was. Just, you'll see in a moment how terrible we thought it was. Ah! I tried to turn flash on. I just tried the bao bun. Not that great. But what does our fortune say? I figured I'd get this on film, right? Oh well, how about another fortune? Um, as soon as you feel too old to do a thing, do it. Interesting. Alright, well that's our fortune for today. See you in a bit. We're barely functioning. We I have literally bitten off more than we can chew, but we'll see you later. Our next stop was Las Posadas Holiday Kitchen in Mexico. Now, at this place, we tried the tamal de pollo. I know the giant tostada is a little more popular, but I am so glad I trusted my instinct and went with this dish because it is the next thing on our best of the fest list with a 9 out of 10. Now. I personally would have given it a 10 out of 10. I could not stop eating this thing. I was so stuffed already, but I kept taking bites of it because it was just that good. But Josephine wasn't as big of a fan, so we met in the middle with a 9 out of 10. And wow, this was just such an amazing dish right up my alley. The chicken was perfectly cooked, and all the sauces that were on top complemented it perfectly. I would... So get this again, I wish they had it year round. This was one of my favorite dishes of the night. I thought it was absolutely incredible. Our next stop was the Feast of the Three Kings, where we tried the queso fresco stuffed arepa topped with shrimp, crushed avocado ahi, and tomato sauce. Now, this dish we gave an 8 out of 10, and the real star here was that shrimp and the two sauces that accompanied it. To me, the arepa just wasn't super impressive, it was just kind of there, but I found the shrimp to be cooked perfectly, everything on the plate seemed to complement each other wonderfully. It was just a really good dish in general, had a lot of good flavors to it. We also got the chocolate crinkle cookie, and we also gave this an 8 out of 10. This was the highest rated cookie on our whole cookie stroll, because wow, this thing was so delicious. It was a giant, 
fudgy brownie type of thing. It was barely even a cookie. I was so impressed by the size of it and the taste was out of this world as far as the cookies go on this Epcot cookie stroll. Just definitely our favorite cookie of the whole evening. It was very impressive. The last stop on our little food tour was the Holiday Sweets and Treats booth where we tried the chocolate peppermint shake featuring Twining Peppermint Cheer Tea. We gave this a 7 out of 10 because it was kind of strange, like it had a little bit of a strange aftertaste, however we found it very refreshing, like after our whole evening we were just ready to kind of wind down and relax, and this was a really nice way to do it. It was definitely not as strong as you would expect a peppermint shake to be, so that was a nice surprise. And we also got our completer sugar cookie, which we gave a 5 out of 10, because it just wasn't that good. It was yet another dry Disney cookie. The only thing that made it worth the blink of an eye to me was that white chocolate peppermint Santa hat that was right on top, and that had no cookie on it whatsoever. So that was probably my favorite little part of the cookie and the only reason I would ever get it again. But you'll see our reactions to these things here in just a moment as we end our night here at Epcot. It was such a fantastic trip and I'm so happy I did this. Alright, so we are finally, we made it to Holiday Kitchen, so we're on our last little thing, which is our completer cookie. I mean, you know, it's sugar cookie, so whatever. You want to take a sip of the shake? We also got the peppermint chocolate shake. Shake. Of course, we're both minors, so not the alcoholic one. But, um, how is it? <laughs> Okay, I like that it's not too sweet, but it's kind of weird after this. Oh, that's interesting. Maybe there's not much peppermint. The there's not much peppermint to it. I, I, I mean, I like there it though. Go. We're both absolutely stuffed, but we have had some amazing <laughs> dishes. And we still have dinner coming up. We're gonna die. Wish us luck. But we successfully did it. We tried 25 different things at Epcot's Festival of the Holidays. So, be proud of us. Thank you DFB, thank you Tim Tracker, uh, Walt Disney World Couple, and Diz Unplugged. You guys inspire me so much. So, it's been super interesting. There will probably be a little more footage coming tonight, so this is a goodbye. It's just, till next time. <laughs> Alright, so we're at the main event, the reason we're actually here, even though we've eaten a lot of food today. We're gonna see Anna's final candlelight. I can't believe my little sister's a senior in high school. I'm gonna cry. I'm so excited for her, and I know she's like crying and she's excited too, because it's her last show ever. Her last chance to be in candlelight. This is such a fun show. It's such a great opportunity for a high schooler to get to do. I got to do it my senior year, so... I'm so proud of her. I can't wait to see this. And we'll see you a little bit later because her teacher's letting us get dinner with her. So I'm really happy. I'm so excited. So good luck in the past, future, and present, Canna. <laughs> All right, so we are so ending our night in Tokyo Dining. To One moment. We're ending the night in Tokyo Dining. I'm here with Anna. I think Josephine and I have officially pushed, uh, pushed ourselves past our limits. We're dying. We're gonna head home. I'm so tired. I'm ready to sleep. I have to work tomorrow. But Anna did amazing. I'm so proud. It took us till joy to the world to find her, but we did find her. So, that is it for this vlog. Thank you for watching.